Hi everyone, we're going to be breaking down Chapter 2's notes into uh, several categories in terms of our discussion, uh, environmental, violence, uh, and intentional injuries, as well as unintentional injuries, uh, stress, communication, as well as um, <clears throat> mental health. So um, we'll start with the uh, latter. Um, and uh, <clears throat> mental health is uh, very important. There's a lot of contributing factors to uh, one's mental health that start uh, at an early age. So it's very important that um, genetics aside, that uh, early relationships that uh, children develop um, will obviously play a critical role from kindergarten all the way through high school uh, that will uh, determine a lot of their behaviors uh, as they start to, uh, you know, to uh, get into their, their uh, college years uh, and then into their 20s and 30s. So uh, there's a lot of disorders that can uh, unfortunately take place um, in terms of people that are um, not capable of, on a daily basis, uh, maintaining um, uh, mental health. And uh, we see a lot of that with uh, our veterans that had post-traumatic stress, um, a lot of the homeless. Um, and so schizophrenia uh, is one of those that's uh, characterized by a breakdown of logical thinking. And so um, a lot of times they'll be talking to themselves. Um, they won't be in their right minds. Um, it looks like they're... Um, you know, uh, having convulsions sometimes and yelling. Um, so obviously this uh, isn't something that often develops uh, even outside the realm of uh, people that have been to war uh, and, and into their 20s and 30s. Sometimes uh, things appear very normal and there's no signs even in early childhood or adolescence. And then sometimes, uh, unfortunately, this happens when people are uh, a little bit older. Um, uh, <clears throat> depression uh, is something that uh, you know we want to uh, try and thwart off, um, and a lot of the self-esteem um, components that uh, we're trying to build over time, starting with uh, obviously early age children, is important. Uh, some things genetically are outside of our control, um, but if somebody is facing depression, for example, it's important that um, they need that they will uh, need the encouragement of others and a good support system um, to practice healthy behaviors from uh, all-encompassing areas, more of a holistic approach from their diet um, to uh, positive thinking, uh, exercise, um, and it, there's a lot of research on um, mental health and diet uh, as well as exercise uh, and how that can help with uh, mental health. So it's very important that at an early age those things are developed uh, properly and um, you know the proper amounts of uh, uh, protein and uh, healthy sugars and fats um, are incorporated into the diet and that uh, there's not more than three to four hours in between snacks and um, full meals, uh, along with the proper amounts of liquids that are being consumed every day, including food, which is about a half an ounce uh, of water per pound of body weight. So for example, if you weigh 150 pounds, uh, it's important that you have at least 75 ounces of water a day, and then if you're working out three to five times a week, then that would go up to maybe three quarters. Uh, and the extreme athletes might go to a one-to-one -one ratio, for example. But all of these things factor into how one feels about themselves. Uh, limiting sugar with kids uh, has been shown to dramatically improve um, behavior, uh, meditation, and yoga has been incorporated into the classrooms uh, in a number of different districts throughout the country. So all of these things working together can definitely uh, help um, not everyone, but uh, a lot of uh, kids seeing things foundationally when they're young. Um, and, uh, um, you know, if things get to a point where uh, they're um, majorly depressed uh, over time and uh, um, things have been building up for years, you know, obviously suicide is uh, something that... Uh, 
unfortunately can happen for a number of different reasons, but depression can lead to a momentary um, a decision to end one's life. I have some personal experience with this. My stepfather committed suicide when I was nine, and uh, it was hard. Um, there's a lot of uh, emotions that go along with that, especially with uh, young children. Uh, they don't necessarily know how to navigate that if a parent or a close uh, family member or a friend, uh, even in their adolescent years, um, does commit suicide. Um, it's something that's going to take some time to, uh, to navigate. And um, uh, one of the warning signs is somebody who talks about it often, uh, even in passing, we always want to take that uh, very seriously. Um, there's no behavior patterns that apply to all cases when it comes to grieving. Um, everyone's a little bit different. Some people um, defer to the internet for support. Some people go to counseling and some people read books. Um, but it's important that you be a good listener and not tell somebody how to feel or how long to take to grieve. So everyone's a little bit different in terms of their timelines. So we just want to keep this in mind when it comes to supporting somebody who's had to um, deal with uh, somebody who's committed suicide that's close to them. So it, it's definitely important that uh, people um, take responsibility for their health, right? At a young age, it's harder, but we have to make sure that we're looking out in terms of the classrooms, healthy snacks, like um, my daughter, for example, goes to an after-school program, and they give very healthy snacks, after-school salad, and uh, other types of healthy fruit and vegetables, uh, which is uh, different than it was a number of years ago. There used to be a lot of uh, unhealthy snacks and uh, enticements with candy and and this still occurs, but um, the landscape has definitely changed in terms of uh, machines on campus. Soda machines uh, have uh, diminished. Uh, healthier foods are in um, machines on uh, college campuses and high school campuses, middle school and elementary schools, and some have been eliminated altogether um, in an effort to curb obesity and uh, help with uh, uh, people's physical and uh, emotional well-beings as it regards to uh, uh, food. And when, you know, kids are influenced by others, um, you know, and are so impressionable at such young ages, um, self-esteem, you know, can definitely take a hit. Bullying has been at the forefront for the last uh, decade, for sure, differently than it ever had been. Um, so it's important to build kids' self-esteem and to improve social and emotional environment um, you want to avoid people who put you down, um, as we all know, but it's a lot of times easier said than done. If they've seen this in the home their whole lives, this is something that uh, often uh, attracts them, um, and this is where the dysfunction uh, starts, and we want to try and recognize those patterns and behaviors and uh, try and make some changes here, um, and this will help them in the long run. You know, so what we're trying to do is build ambition uh, and confidence, um, teach people to be persistent, even in the face of failure. Uh, for me, sports did that a lot, um, helped me to overcome adversity, <coughs> because there's obviously a number of uh, losses, um, not only in the end game, but, uh, you know, in the middle of um, the journey. Uh, a lot of times there's things that you have to contend with that, uh, you know, you learn to um, not over-dramatize, but uh, channel them in a way that uh, helps you become more patient and more understanding, um, more uh, understanding of yourself and the world around you. So all these experience, experiences are teachable moments, um, and so we want to make sure that we're utilizing um, all these uh, situations that these young uh, children especially are, are going through at home and in the classroom uh, with extracurricular activities. Uh, to help, again, with ambition, confidence, uh, teach them persistence, um, to help them to have uh, positive personality characteristics, because uh, that, in turn, helps promote good health. Um, coping is an important, vital factor in mental health. Um, there's uh, negative methods of coping, and there's positive methods of coping. Uh, we want to make sure that we're teaching them how to exercise and how to think positively and not be self-defeating, um, because uh, you know, 
know, those types of things learned at an early age uh, can be very detrimental and uh, affect uh, things peripherally at work, in relationships of all kinds, friendships, intimate relationships. Um, it can affect their schoolwork, and there can be a, a, a snowball effect, as you can imagine, um, over time. So it's important that uh, all of these things are developed and continue to uh, be strengthened um, and reinforced, you know, every year. Um, you know, otherwise various mental conditions um, can, can occur um, over time. Um, and uh, this is something that, you know, can, can certainly affect people um, on many levels. And this is something that can be problematic because it can interfere with normal living, right? Um, and so, you know, you just want to make sure that um, the signs um, uh, are there in terms of um, someone going in the right direction. And, uh, you know, because there's multiple personality disorder, um, uh, things that uh, can transpire over time, and sometimes they're very subtle and they're not noticeable um, necessarily until there's multiple factors and a number of different things that might um, show, uh, you know, as a result of uh, all the things we're talking about. Um, sometimes genetics, sometimes uh, diet and a lack of exercise and a lack of familial support. Um, and then all of this can lead to depression. And so it's, it's complicated. Um, but you know, we have to make sure that we're doing uh, what we can to uh, promote healthy lifestyles and, and positive mental health. A lot of times, um, a physical disorder uh, that is caused by an emotional response known as uh, psychosomatic disease can happen, and <laughs> a lot of <laughs> things that um, are psychosomatic or psychological can affect people. Um, from a physical perspective, so it definitely goes in both directions. Um, and, uh, you know, the, one of the keys to um, uh, positive self-esteem is changing the uh, negative beliefs about yourself, which often is very difficult if you've been put down your whole life, especially in your home life or by friends. So you want to surround yourself uh, with a positive support system um, as much as you can, and we need to, as professionals, uh, recognize uh, this uh, pattern that might be developing as soon as possible and uh, try and uh, change some of the, those behaviors to uh, help them in the long run. As I mentioned before, obviously hereditary, things can be hereditary um, and genetic in nature, um, so this is something you always have to be aware of, um, unfortunately, um, but we're dealing with uh, more of, uh, talking about today, more of uh, things that are within our control patterns that develop from an early age, um, but it is uh, worthy to note that, uh, uh, again, things can be genetic in nature, and um, if uh, behaviors start to change drastically, it's important that we identify these behaviors and uh, um, report them to the appropriate people um, so that we can uh, try and uh, help uh, the person um, figure out the best solution for this situation. Another area that uh, we have to be concerned about is uh, codependency and enabling uh, somebody who um, might be behaving in a manner that's uh, unhealthy, um, and especially at an early age uh, emotionally, whether uh, we're just chalking things up to kids being kids or, um, you know, behavioral issues um, or somebody involved with an, an addiction. Uh, is where you think of enabling and codependency the most. Um, codependent people uh, wish to often control the addicted person um, by uh, justifying the behavior. So uh, it goes, you know, both ways. Uh, you know, we're trying to make sure that the person who might be addicted or misbehaving is um, uh, helped and uh, proper uh, interventions are implemented. Um, but it's also important that uh, if there's any uh, evidence of um, a person uh, being codependent, trying to control a situation and not um, 
looking out for the best interest of uh, uh, the person who's misbehaving or who's addicted, that that be addressed and identified as well. We were talking earlier uh, about how things uh, start at a very, very early age. Um, babies that are born to teen mothers are at an increased risk for uh, low birth weight and other complications, uh, mainly because uh, these mothers don't often uh, practice healthy behaviors. And so a lot of times this is where it starts, um, you know, from a very early age and, uh, you know, these behaviors continue unless, again, there is uh, an identification, uh, intervention, and uh, so uh, it's just something that, that occurs from a very early age and is uh, something that is outside of the child's control uh, until they're much, much older and able to identify. And so uh, we as uh, you know, educational professionals uh, have a responsibility to do everything we can to make sure that uh, we're assisting in uh, these uh, areas and identifying and um, helping to uh, intervene and implement strategies uh, to help um, offer insight into uh, better eating habits, uh, um, implementing uh, exercise, um, uh, changing behaviors, and uh, showing uh, the benefits of um, this, these lifestyle changes. Sorry about that little pause. Um, so uh, what we were talking about earlier about codependency, I wanted to make a, another note. Uh, it, it can be uh, um, treated, right, just like most of the things that we're talking about, uh, unless we're talking about extreme schizophrenia and mental disorders. Uh, counseling and group therapy can help very much. Um, and so it's just something that uh, shouldn't be considered taboo. Uh, that can just completely transform a person's uh, perception of um, situations and, and how things are handled, coping skills. Uh, it, can, it can and has uh, changed lives. So um, it shouldn't be thought of as uh, something that's a, a stigma or uh, has a negative connotation. Uh, counseling group therapy can be um, incredibly rewarding. So a lot of what we're talking about, uh, as we mentioned, you know, happens at a very early age from mental health to de developing moral codes, um, you know, which happen in several stages um, as a child is growing up. Um, and, uh, you know, we're just trying to prevent an, uh, an environment that's safe, um, that, uh, you know, helps people to um, handle their frustrations properly, to... Um, minimize uh, outbreaks of violence um, and um, try and cut down on bullying um, and if this does happen you know making sure that uh, um, uh, an adult is uh, notified um, and uh, the problem is addressed right um, and uh, just trying to do everything we can to facilitate a healthy physical and emotional academic environment um, for our populations. This is uh, the conclusion of part one of the exam two notes on mental health.